oh, look, we've just been debriefing for the last five minutes. I've got a sensational team which can only support me and would get me through everything. They're very honest with their appraisal, so I've already got a list of things to work on, but how can you not be happy? Huge win, my first UFC win in my hometown. I'm, uh, I'm ecstatic. Do you give yourself moments of like, guess and pace up in the back, or is it immediately like, okay, well, I've done that, Look, I, I find it hard not to sometimes. I, I, I can be very quick to... Uh, uh, pat myself on the back, but again, when you've got a sensational corner, it evens it out very nicely. You're obviously not a youngster. I'm a lot older than you, so don't yeah. take that wrong. <laughs> uh, how tough has it had been to get to this stage of having a uh, look, it's difficult. Yeah, I am entering those years now of um, of not maybe being at my athletic prime, but I come from a, a very lucky team where we've got uh, athletes that have gone through similar things at the similar stage of their career. So uh, what got to show tonight, as much as maybe things like speed and athleticism might uh, saunter as you go on in your career, stuff like the grind and the mental toughness probably peak as you hit uh, this stage of your, of your athletic endeavour. How was it before you got that 50,000 people? Yeah, it's, that was pretty special. I, I, as I anticipated, I didn't notice it as much during the fight. Absolutely noticed it during the walkout. Obviously up there, Kazali was a popular choice here in Melbourne. And uh, look, I got to take that in, which was a really special moment. It's not like one of those things you dream about, right? I think fans, you know, young kids, like, imagine the walkout, right? When you do walk out there, it's this huge stadium. It's like the fans are going crazy. Is that just a dream moment? Oh, it's, it's something you couldn't even imagine. You you play off in your head how it might feel until you actually do it. Uh, you know, I, I, I planned on maybe walking out there in a little bit more of a, a controlled, sombre atmosphere. As soon as that, that uh, song started playing and the crowd started singing, I couldn't help but sing myself. You know what I mean? It's it's an amazing experience. And I feed a lot on that po positive energy. I'm not a very angry base fighter or a very emotional base fighter as far as those things. I, I feed off positive energy. And to say there was positive uh, energy and abundance leading out, walking out there, it was, uh, it was un unseen. Do you, do you have to like, take a moment? Because I can imagine you could almost get two rats up there like, yeah, a little bit, but again, because I feed off that sort of emotion, it's a little easier. If if I did feed off something like a, a an anger or a, you know an intensity, you you would have to make the switch. But because I'm already feeding off that positive energy, it actually just builds up what I need. It builds almost builds up the fuel that I need for that fight. So there's not much of a switch. I just take all that energy that that positive energy that the, the local crowd, my home crowd, were feeding to me, and took that in the cage with me. Was that Dave Was that just because you were here in Melbourne? Or have you walked out from that before? Or? Uh, look, I've had I've had aspirations of competing in this stadium uh, all my life. It was very much in a different sport, being Aussie Rules, and, uh, and I thought that's a that's a great little marriage of the two sports. I've grown up playing Aussie Rules since I was eight years old, and I had aspirations of playing AFL, obviously here at this stadium. So, the song was a, a G up to sort of really marriage those two parts of my life together: my my Aussie Rules career and my MMA career. <laughs> I'm not sure encouragement would be uh, would be the, the best description, but uh, look, they're, they're sensational. I've got an amazing corner uh, with uh, Jamie Murray, uh, Andy Colgrave out of the ring gym in, in Footscray, and obviously UFC veteran Daniel Kelly. What I've got is actually three very different interpretations of how to coach, and it works beautifully with me. They, they motivate me. And look, to say whether it, uh, it was positive or negative, you don't have to look at that third round. Obviously, I, I dug deep, went out there and showed what I wanted to do in that first round, third round, and they, they knew how to get me there. You took some big shots in the first round. You gave some back yourself. How big was being up in well played as a fight like your durability? Well, just have, you just have to look at that last fight. I got hit with probably, uh, you know, by a, a smaller athlete, probably half as, half as hard as I got hit tonight, and I, and I sunk. You know what I mean? Being able not to have to cut, uh, I, the only way to describe it is a disgusting amount of weight to make a weight division. I'm back up to the division I need to be uh, at. I've got to stop getting hit so much. It suddenly seems like one of my favourite pastimes, but look, I'm, I'm much able, much better to accommodate those sort of punches at this weight. Given that you've spent you know, 10 years getting up to this point, you know, you didn't go as planned. How much of a catharsis was it to hear your, your name read out as the victim? Look, uh, I, I really played that word redemption into this. Uh, into this fight. It was really funny, actually. I, I thought about it a little bit more this week. Obviously, there was redemption coming from not only my USC performance, but uh, the more I thought about it, there's a little bit of redemption again with my Aussie Rules career. I was a, a far more talented Aussie Rules footballer than I was fighter, but I didn't work one-tenth as hard as I did. So I probably missed my opportunity to compete at the highest level in Aussie Rules 
because of my lack of, of commitment. And to get it to the highest level of the sport that I'm in now, especially at this stadium, there was a little sense of redemption with that too. So not only have I made redemption with my, my UFC debut, but redemption with my athletic career to show that, yes, I can buckle down and I can reach the highest level of the sport that I'm competing in. How high level did you get with Australia? I played uh, VFL, which is probably the secondary, the feeder league into the, the AFL. You know I mean? I captained uh, in the VFL at, at uh, uh, reserves level as well. I, I came across some injuries, but again, my uh, my commitment to my Aussie rules career was not even in the same fraction as I as I commit to my MMA. I was, I was far more naturally talented, which sometimes can be a curse when it comes to any sort of sport. Which VFL club was that? Uh, Werribee. I played a year under Werribee. Yeah, it was sensational. We had some high level guys there and I got to play with a lot of guys that went on to play in, in Aussie rules and uh, look, it was a great experience. But uh, if I look back now, I wish I had have maybe uh, shown a little bit more intensity, a little bit more commitment to what I did with my Aussie rules. But look where we are now. You mentioned a few of the guys you played with. Uh, I got to play with people like Dale Morris, who went on to play a great career with Doggy. He was a sensational. You want to talk about people that put the hard yards into their Aussie rules career. He was a great example. I remember in one of the practice matches actually Leading into the career, I actually got to play on Chris Grant in uh, when he just came back from one of his knee surgeries. He did sit on top of my head and take a mark, which was uh, sensational, but I got to play with a lot of those high level guys and it was, it was sensational. Thank you. Uh, four months ago we spoke and you said you had two years left in this sport. Now that you're up well to like you've had this big victory, do you extend that a little bit or you still think two years? Uh, look, okay. that, that sounds about right. Look, it's hard to put a, an actual number on it. What I'm chasing with this sport and always my motivation is making memories. You know what I mean? Like that you talk about, you know, I've got a memory now of going out and having a, a hard fought victory in my hometown in, in possibly front of the biggest crowd of all time. That's a memory. You know what I mean? I'm looking to do that over the next couple of years. As soon as I feel like, you know, I'm not there making great memories anymore, that's probably the time to walk away from the sport. How fast the turnaround do you want? Look, I have a little bit of a rest. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's been a, it's been a very troublesome year. We've come up and down from yeah. way, coming back from the thing. Uh, what I have said though is when I do come back, I've had two great fights now in my hometown. I'd love to travel abroad. I'd love to have the Vegas experience with my team. And, uh, and, and get a win over in the, the States as well.